after the fact. Um, but great. Okay, so we're recording. <laughs> awesome. Um, can everyone see my screen okay? Cool. Um, so, hey everyone, this is Henry from Greenhouse Speaking. Um, I've been working with Michelle, who's been doing an awesome job doing all of the configuration to get Greenhouse up and running for Otterbine. Um, and so really what we'll be doing on today's training, I think we have kind of an hour and a half scheduled. The first hour will be me, um, and then I'll turn it over to Michelle and Lois, who will kind of be able to answer more like organization specific Q&A in the remaining 30 minutes at the end. Um, in terms of our agenda, what we'll be talking through is a couple core greenhouse features and functionality listed here on this slide. So we'll start with walking through the greenhouse dashboard. We'll then take a look at what it looks like to set, a, set up a job off of a template and then walk through an interview kit as if we're kind of conducting an interview together to get a sense of what that will look like. In terms of questions, I'll pause like as I'm going through um, for questions here and there. We do have a good amount to cover, so I won't be pausing like all the time, but I'll try to pause as much as I can for questions. If like real time questions come up that you wanna just like get out before they leave your head, you can definitely feel free to throw those in the Zoom chat as well, which I can kind of do my best to keep an eye on as we move through everything. Um, cool, so that'll kind of be the agenda for today. And then I'll turn it over to Michelle and Lois for kind of more general Q and A. Um, and, and we'll go ahead and get started. Michelle, anything I missed here or does this all sound good? Nope, that sounds great, thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, so we're actually gonna spend most of our time today, not in this deck, actually in Greenhouse. Um, so I just switched over to a new tab, which is showing my Greenhouse demo account, which I've kind of like engineered to reflect the work that Michelle has done as best I can um, to make this kind of more relevant to the fields and items that you are going to be seeing. Um, but before we kind of take a look at the dashboard, which is kind of the first item on our list, Greenhouse is really gonna be, you know, obviously the new tool that you're using for recruiting initiatives. And it's really designed to be kind of that single source of truth for all of your recruiting initiatives at the organization. Um, so that everything can kind of be tracked and monitored in one place. And it's really easy kind of who has ownership, really easy to see rather kind of who has ownership over what as candidates move through the process to make sure no one's falling through the cracks. So with that, we'll start on the Greenhouse dashboard. And this is what you're gonna see whenever you log into Greenhouse. Users on this call, like you're all gonna see some varying version of this depending on how many jobs you're on and like what your role is in the process. But you'll see some something similar basically to what we see here. And the main thing with the Greenhouse dashboard is that it's very much designed to be action oriented, like some other ATSs you might log in and it's just kind of like a list of candidates and jobs, whereas this is designed to be like, okay, for this specific user, like what do I need to do to make sure nothing's falling through the cracks? And it's just very intuitive. You kind of know what to focus your attention on whenever you log in to the system. So again, this is what you'll see when you'll log in and we'll just kind of walk through some of these modules together um, at a high level right now. So the first thing you'll see on your recruiting dashboard um, is your interviews. So we're gonna talk through interviews in a little bit more detail later in the call. Um, but basically in your My Interviews widget right here, you're gonna see any upcoming interviews. So we see we have one upcoming at 4 p.m. today, which we're gonna work through together a little bit later in the call. You'll also see a record of any past interviews. So I don't have any recently past interviews, but I could see a record of all of my past interviews right here. So right up front, that's what you'll see. Um, continuing on down the dashboard, the next thing you'll see is your applications to review. So this is kind of something that will be determined on the job level if you're assigned to review applications, all of the applications on your respective jobs. This will be kind of like candidate resume and any questions that they submitted with their application are gonna show here for you to review. So if we click in, for example, to this STNA position, we can see we have one new applicant that's come to. And if I click right here, I'm basically going to see their name and their application materials, like their resume. And you would also see their responses to the larger application form that Michelle has built out. And from there, you can kind of advance, skip or reject them or leave additional feedback if needed. So that's kind of that top of funnel application review will surface to you on the jobs that you're assigned that role on right here on the dashboard. 
The next thing you'll see is this add a referral widget. Um, so this will apply to all of you and to the larger like business as a whole. Um, the idea here is that ideally long term, all of your referrals are coming into Greenhouse um, to kind of build everything into one place as the source of truth for recruiting and have folks leverage kind of their personal networks to help the businesses recruiting initiatives. So pretty straightforward here. Um, you can just add your referrals manually right here via this add a referral button if you have someone that's interested in a current position at Otterbein. Or you can also just share a general link with members of your network or maybe like groups that you're involved with. So essentially I could say like, I want, um, and this is my demo account, so I have it as this job board that we see here. But let's just imagine I wanted to share every single open job at Otterbein. You would see Otterbein right here to select and you can create a customized URL to share with your network. And if they apply to any of the jobs at this URL right here, when we copy it and share it, you will be listed as the referrer as well. So kind of a way to tap into maybe more passive interest versus when you have a specific member of your network that's interested in a specific open job at the organization. Um, so just a way to help the recruiting team bringing all referrals into Greenhouse in one place and also just like leveraging your personal networks to tap into some you know wider top of funnel that maybe wasn't there before. The next thing you'll see is the option to integrate your social networks. Um, so we have integrations with Twitter and LinkedIn. You can connect them right here. Basically what this allows you to do at a high level is just push open Otterbein jobs out from Greenhouse to your LinkedIn network or Twitter network for again, just kind of tapping into maybe a more passive wider network of applicants for them to apply. If they apply via one of your social URLs, you'll also be listed as the referrer. Um, so I typically recommend that everyone do this, can't hurt. I don't have a Twitter account, but I have my LinkedIn integrated with Greenhouse's LinkedIn account. Um, and you can just set it to go out at like a round robin almost. So it just like schedules a random grouping of posts to go out at a specified time. Um, so it's just kind of happening in the background, sharing those out to your networks so people can apply. And then you can kind of track high level how many members of your network have applied, how many are active on current open jobs, meaning they're like interviewing in the process and how many might have been hired. Next thing you'll see is this My Referrals widget where you can track your specific referrals, what jobs they're on, and where they stand in the process. And then you can also follow jobs. So if there are specific jobs that you are you know, hands-on involved in, you can follow those so that they're pinned on your dashboard right here. And just two other things I wanted to show before we pause quickly for any questions. Um, first thing you'll see on the right-hand rail here is My Tasks and then all tasks. So my task is gonna filter for like your specific role at the organization and the jobs that you're active on. What are the tasks that are being kind of attributed to you to follow up on essentially, depending on whether you're assigned as like kind of more the recruiter function on the job, hiring manager function on the job, or like scheduling coordinator on the job. So kind of going back to my earlier point between your upcoming interviews, your applications to review, and your tasks, you can have a really clear lens into day to day, like what, what needs my attention on the jobs that I'm working on in Greenhouse and just use this as your starting point and source of truth. So there's never any question of like what you need to focus on when you log in, you have it all surfaced to you right here to make sure that everyone's kind of moving through the process efficiently and candidates are having a good experience. My task list looks a little wild because this is a demo account. So I have like hundreds of things that are overdue. Hopefully you won't have this many. Um, and then you can view all tasks like across the org that in terms of like what you can see based on your permissions if you toggle to all tasks. And two other things I just wanted to show, we have a quick helpful links resource. This one's pretty straightforward. This is where you can view internal jobs. You can email your in-house contacts. So it'd be like Otterbein super users and then a gateway directly into our help center with a ton of FAQs on basic greenhouse features and functionality. And then the last thing that we'll talk about with regard to the greenhouse dashboard here is just personalization options. So I showed you how I have it configured and that's just kind of the way that I like it, but y'all don't have to do that. You can very much like reorder, like if you want referrals up top, if that's the main thing you're gonna be doing, you can do that. You can really drag and drop to have your dashboard follow whatever structure makes the most sense for you. Um, if there are certain widgets that you don't want to see, like maybe I don't want to see my referrals, I can hide it and I'm just not going to see it when I log in and save that change. So very much personalized, um, personalized personalization, excuse me, um, that you can do on your dashboard to kind of fit your needs and use case. 
But that's high level kind of what the greenhouse dashboard is um, and how you'll be using it. We're going to take a look at interviews in a little bit more detail in like the latter portion of the call. But just wanted to pause there before we move forward to see if there were any questions um, or Michelle, if you wanted to chime in on anything that I might have missed that's relevant to the org for the dashboard specifically. Any questions? Hey, Henry, okay. Michelle, um, yeah. I was talking to one of the recruiters um, yesterday and in regards to adding um, referrals, when you add them into the system, do they always have to be tied to a specific position in the system or can you add them in as a you know, potential like passive seeker? What does that look like? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so right now, they do have to be associated with a specific job. Um, so we, and then we have like this little like tooltip that just says pick the closest option if there's not a specific job and just make sure you like leave a note when you're adding the referral. So the hiring team knows that this is more of like a general interest referral. So that's typically the workflow that I would recommend. However, Michelle, if, if you want to kind of talk through that in more detail, if you think you'd rather have like a more general option for folks to select, we can certainly discuss that on our, on our check-in later. Um, but kind of out of the box, like if you do nothing here, this is going to be the recommendation just to pick the closest option to what the candidate's interested and flag it for the hiring team. Perfect. Thanks, Henry. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Um, well, if there aren't any other questions, let's go ahead and move into job setup. And again, if you think of a question, you can definitely throw it in the chat as well. Awesome. So um, what we're going to walk through next is how to create a job in Greenhouse. So whenever you want to go in and create a job and kind of request approval for it to be opened, you're going to go to this plus icon top right. And you'll see there are three options. We can add a candidate. We can also add a referral this way. But then what we're going to be talking about right now is creating a job. So when we create a job, we're going to see a couple options. We are always going to click on copy an existing job. And I'll explain why like as we work through the setup. But we're always going to pick copy an existing job because, and yours is going to look different. Again, this is my demo account. Um, but what Michelle has done is built like a series of template jobs that have a lot of like the logic and structure and workflows of kind of how you'll be using Greenhouse for those specific recs already built into the system. So it just minimizes the lift of having to like reinvent the wheel every time you create a job. You're just going to select the appropriate template job that you want to build off of so that a lot of the basic framework is already kind of there and you're just kind of refining case by case. So in this example, we're going to be building this STNA role together off of this STNA hospice template um, that mirrors as closely as I could kind of what exists in your account. So we're always going to pick the appropriate template for the specific rec that we're creating as our starting point. And then Greenhouse is going to send us through this almost like timeline of various milestones that we need to complete to set this job up successfully. So the first thing that we're going to see is this job info section, where we're just defining some of the basic criteria for this position. So pretty straightforward at the beginning, we just need to make sure the internal job name reflects what we wanted to and remove that copy of <laughs> so it doesn't show. And then we can also set like if for whatever reason you wanted the internal job name to be one thing and the external job name to be different, you can do that as well. And the external job name is basically what candidates are gonna see on the career page and any other third-party channels that you're using. From there, we're going to update the department and office to reflect the appropriate department. And I'm just going to keep the office as is because my locations are a little bit different from yours, but you would want to specify like the specific office location that this position sits in. From there, you'll generate a requisition ID. And then there are a few job fields that you will be asked to fill in. So a job field are just like these four or five that we're seeing right here that have been created custom by Michelle for your organization. Just some job level data points that we need to capture for reporting purposes. So we can select the employment type. These are the options that you'll see. We'll be asked to select the reason for the opening. So I'm gonna say this is kind of like a new headcount or add versus a replacement. Shift, we can say, you know, this is a second shift SGNA position. 
select the compensation status. And if this was a replacement position, we would add the name of the replacing person right here. And that's pretty much it for job info. And then if it was a case in which we had multiple openings, so maybe we're hiring three STNAs in one location at the same time, and it's like the same interview team and hiring manager, we can add individual openings to track those openings in the one larger rec. This is the first step. I'm gonna click create job and continue. Um, but any questions from the team or Michelle, anything to add on this job info section before we move forward into the scorecard? So Henry, if we had three open um, positions for this nurse aid, would we need to add each position? We have to add each position that's open or would it just be the one job posting to hire all three? Yeah, that's a really good question. So yeah, the way that it would work in Greenhouse is if you just have three STNAs to use our initial example in the same location and you're just recruiting for them at the same time, but it's the same process and pipeline, you would just have the one job rec, which is kind of what we're creating right now, and the one job post but you just have told Greenhouse that it's three people that you're hiring. So when you hire the first one, you're gonna say this is for opening one basically, but we'll keep the job open until we've filled the other two. And then only at that point would the larger job close, but it would just be that one larger job rec and the one associated job post in the specific location. Does that help? It does. So if we were hiring say full-time, part-time and PRN STNAs, we would have to have a separate job posting for, for each full-time and then also for however many positions fall under that full-time and then separate for the part-time and for however many of those we need to, correct? Yeah, so as well, like if it's a different location or a different hiring team, um, then you would wanna create them as separate recs. It's only if it's like the same, hiring team, the same process and the same like job that you would want to have them as multiple openings within the same rec. Um, I think if you have like more specific questions about that workflow, just as it relates to your organization specifically, it might make sense to share those with Michelle and then she and I can like kind of game plan on our check-in call, what makes the most sense so that that can then be communicated out to the team. Okay. So I'll just jump in really quick. Yeah. So I know that we have our clinical positions that we are always hiring for different shifts, different statuses. So our goal would be to keep, um, I mean, this one specifically for hospice, so it's, it's listed as a PRN, but say it's for your site, when you were going and filling out and opening that initial job, which I'll be creating, I'll create the majority of the status as far as the specific department, because that's going to stay the same. Um, I might not add in specifically the employment type, whether it's full-time, part-time, PRN, et cetera. Um, we know that it's gonna be not exempt. Um, so there is some flexibility to leave it as just like a core, the job, you know, the day-to-day -day job duties and functions are gonna stay the same. And then as you go in and hire your, your first time, you know, your first shift part-time, your second shift full-time, when you go to the bottom and you see those opening IDs, when you go through to hire the person and go through that process and do that opening ID, that's where you can put in the specifics of what you hired the person in at without having to create multiple openings for in essence, the same job that have different shifts and schedules. So it's still gonna be one. Mm. Which we can always talk more about that, but it's gonna stay one, it's gonna mirror very similar to what we do today as far as where we each have our clinical openings per location. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. Great. Okay. Um, well, let's go ahead and create our job and continue. We're not done, but this will just kind of like create it in the system as a draft at the very least. And then we'll continue through our job setup workflow. Just taking a sec. Okay. Great. So the next thing that we're going to be kind of landed on here is the candidate scorecard. Um, so this is essentially like the assessment criteria for this job specifically. Um, so the attributes that we're rating the candidate against essentially. Um, this mirrors pretty closely what Michelle has built for you. I think Michelle, you basically just have like the qualifications varying by job 
Um, but the basic scorecard will be pretty pretty straightforward for the time being. Um, you can make edits to this as needed. The idea is like long term. Ultimately, this will be very specific job by job. Um, but I know the team had, had discussed kind of starting just a little bit more straightforward, mostly just varying the qualifications field. Um, but this will just be inherited from that template job for you to make edits as needed for the specific job that you're creating. Um, and we'll take a look at where this scorecard actually surfaces when we um, do our kind of like mock interview together. But this is kind of how you configure the scorecard and feedback criteria on the back end of the job to then surface to your interviews. Um, any questions on the scorecard or Michelle, anything that you wanna add in terms of like expectations around editing scorecards when creating the job? I mean, this is something we're still in process of building out, which is going to be right. a much larger audience. So what I've tried right. at least for job specifics is just that core qualification, if they needed some type of licensure or, you know, driver's license, et cetera. So I've added those in per position. Um, and then as we continue in the system over time, we'll get with a, you know, a larger group and, and see, you know, what are the core skills and personality traits, et cetera, that we look for in our, in our um, candidates. Um, so currently, I mean, it's, it's kind of a shell. Of, of something to build on. And this is Lois. If I can add, this is one of the one of many things we like about Greenhouse that over time we can get to more standardization so that you know whatever someone's interviewing, we can start to see what are the trends and you know particularly candidates we hire, they all have this kind of a score, this kind of an answer. Um, so stay tuned and we'll probably be tapping in on some of you to you know, work on separate to help us create some of these uh, templates for the scorecard. Great. Yeah, and that's definitely something I do a lot of other orgs I work with, to kind of like start, start simple. Um, and then it's kind of a, a gradual process in partnership with stakeholders like yourself, to kind of like flesh these out a little bit job by job, and then ultimately have a very standard like scorecard that they're using. So it's like very much standard like level feedback that's coming through and like benchmarked across all candidates. Um, cool. Any other questions about the scorecard before we move forward? Okay. So once we look next, we're going to be landed on our interview plan. So the interview plan in Greenhouse is essentially where you're defining like what is the structured like journey and process that we want candidates to move through from application all the way to offer? Um, and so this is really important and something Michelle's for kind of like standardizing during implementation and kind of to Lois's earlier point, just to build some of that standardization of process into the system. Um, and so basically what we see here to give you an understanding of like what the interview plan is when you see this is you have your collection of stages and so in six stages greenhouse terminology, that essentially means these white boxes that we see here. And every gap between a stage, the idea is that this represents a decision point. So, you know, we do application and resume review. We either advance them to phone screen if they kind of meet the, the basic criteria or we reject them. And then we have like a drop off rate that we can capture. And the idea is like all candidates are moving through this same structured process. So it's kind of a level, level playing field, if you will. Um, from phone interview to face-to-face, -face, which might encompass multiple interviews kind of back-to-back, -back, ultimately to reference check, verbal offer, and then offer slash hire. Um, so that's sort of the journey as Michelle has defined it on the template job. And the idea here is that you wanna be very diligent to leave these stage names as is. These are meant to be general so that they can be used across different types of jobs at the organization as just kind of a standardization tactic and a way to glean like kind of like pass through and funnel metrics across the board from application review to phone interview, for example, on jobs in different groupings so that you have kind of a lens into higher level recruiting metrics across the larger organization. The gray boxes that we see here are the actual interviews. So these you're kind of more free to edit, at least in terms of like how that would impact reporting. You can get more specific here, but always kind of leave the stage names as is, because we don't want to edit these because that can have downstream impacts on reports. The gray boxes are interviews, um, and this is where you would go in to actually customize the, the interview specifically to maybe add in some specific questions or items that you want the interviewer to focus on. Um, high level, this is sort of the interview plan that you will see when you're creating your jobs off your templates. Um, 
The other thing you can do is here in alert settings, set the number of days that you want candidates to be in each stage of the process, just to make sure folks are moving through quickly and no one's falling through the cracks. Um, but really the idea here is we're just defining like what is the workflow and process going to be from start to finish for candidates on this specific job. I want to take a quick look at just like how to configure an interview kit just because we're going to take a look at what that looks like to an interviewer. Um, but any questions high level on this interview plan or again like Michelle and Lois anything that you want to add um, for folks on this call specifically with regard to the interview plan? I mean, I think to echo what we were saying about the um, the previous stage is that this is something also that we will, you know, be building upon mm -hmm. standardizing over time. So just to level set that expectation, we have the core general stages down, but we will continue to um, build this out and develop it as well. Awesome. Cool. Um, and then, yeah, as I mentioned, like the gray boxes are interviews. So this is where you would go as you continue to build some of that standardization to say like, okay, for this behavioral phone interview, I'm going to click edit. Um, and, you know, maybe I want this to focus on the qualifications specifically. So we can check off attributes from our scorecard that we want this interviewer to assess. We can edit, sorry, edit rather the estimated time for the interview. And kind of add in any prep. I think this will probably be like a longer term thing that y'all continue to work on as you collaborate on some of this internally. Um, but all of this exists as like features and functionality where you can add in like questions almost as a script for interviewers um, to really hone in on that subset of attributes so that ideally like everyone that moves through the behavioral phone interview on this STNA position is being asked kind of like a structured standard set of questions kind of long term um, once more of that standardization has been built into the system this is kind of how you'd do that um, and then we'll take a look as to like what this actually appears as to an interviewer when they're conducting an interview when we do that together in the latter half of the call any questions on this piece configuring the interviews themselves All good? Okay. So the next thing we will see is the hiring team. Um, and so basically on the hiring team, this is where you're defining two things. So for reporting purposes, like we wanna make sure that we have a record of like who is filling these roles on this job specifically. But also, we saw the My Tasks feature on our dashboard together. Um, this is what tells Greenhouse, like, whose dashboard should we be surfacing these tasks to? So, for example, like, who is functioning as the recruiter on this job that should be seeing those first applications, that's in charge of advancing and rejecting candidates, managing scorecard reminders, all of this, like, basic operational day-to-day -day stuff to keep this STNA position moving forward efficiently. Um, that's who we'd want to assign as the recruiter on this job so that when they log in, their task list shows what they need to do. The coordinator is really just going to be that person who's scheduling interviews. So the recruiter advances a candidate. The coordinator gets a task on their dashboard to schedule the next interview. If this is the same person, you can add them as both the recruiter and the coordinator. But basically, it's really important both for reporting and task management to make sure you're building out the hiring team so that you have record. And what you'll need to do before you do that is you just scroll down to who can see this job and just make sure that whoever you're trying to assign as a hiring manager, recruiter, coordinator has job admin access so we can basically search any of our users. Um, and let's just say, for example, I want Eric here to be a job admin which essentially authorizes him to be a recruiter. I can make that specification and then add him as a recruiter up here. Um, but the main takeaway here for you all right now is just that it's best practice to build this out with specific users as you're building out jobs for task management purposes. Does that make sense? Any questions here or items that the team wants to add? Henry, I just want to clarify, um, if someone is you know, always recruiting for RNs, for every mm -hmm. time they post positions that to fill this out or can they have a standard template that's always attached to RN that they're going to do and then they can change it if necessary. Yeah, so it's possible to work with future permissions to make sure that like when 
a specific RN job is opened in a specific location, this person is assigned like a specific job admin level. However, the hiring team does typically need to be edited job by job as you're creating those jobs just to make sure that you're like doing a once over to ensure the correct people are assigned. I wonder if maybe we can discuss on our call where it would make sense to assign some of those future permissions. I can add that as an agenda item. That's certainly doable. Um, but for the most part, this is something that will be managed job by job. Okay, so it could be future enhancement, but right now um, we, all, we understand it's job by job. Okay, thanks. Yeah, definitely. And I'm just adding that so we can discuss in a little more detail on our call, but high level, yeah, that's kind of the takeaway. Great. Um, so let's move forward. Just in the interest of time, I want to take a look at two more things that are relevant to job setup. The first is email notifications. Um, so I think like this is possibly something that might be better summed up in just some of our help center resources because there are a bunch of different email notifications that you can set up. A lot of them are pretty intuitive. What I can do is just share out some like FAQs with Michelle and Lois to potentially just circulate among the team. Um, but at a high level, like this notifications dashboard just allows you to subscribe first for like candidate notifications. I'm actually gonna start here subscribe yourself to various notifications about new applicants or new referral and agency submissions. And then there are a bunch of other notifications that you can subscribe yourself to as well. In addition to customizing like when scorecard reminders are going out, um, notifications about new scorecards being submitted by team members, um, all like pretty intuitive. Um, I'm not gonna spend too much detail reviewing right now, definitely something you can kind of take a look at when you're when you're in the system. And in the meantime, I'll share out some basic resources to review what's possible with notifications here. But the main takeaway here is that these are like email notifications to your inbox versus like just internal greenhouse notifications that you see on your dashboard. Great. And then the next thing you'll see is this approval section as we're working through job setup. So this is kind of the last step. As you can see, like I've created this STNA position but it's still in draft and that's because approval needs to be requested to basically just like spot check the job before it can be opened and posted to my career page. Um, so essentially like the last step of the process is to request approval. And for me in my demo account, it's just going through my approval chain that I've set up. So it's going to this user as an email um, for them to mark as approved or kind of deny approval. I'm gonna say this all looks good and I'm just doing this manually on the back end. Um, but basically at this point, like the job has been approved, my approver decided that all of this information looked good and accurate. And now the job is open. Now that the job is open, the next thing we'll want to do is go into the job post that we inherited from the template and toggle it live. So everything that we've talked about up to this point has been like internally facing to the Otterbein team. The job post is the candidate facing piece that ports it over to your career page and any other third party job boards that you're leveraging. Um, so this is a really important final step and that's just toggling the job post live, which sends it to my career page and publishes it to third party job boards. I'm just gonna like edit so y'all can kind of see what this looks like. Um, but Michelle has configured this on a lot of the template jobs Basically, this is going to house like the job name. Um, you'll post it in your case. It'll be like the Otterbein career page that you're posting it to. And then this is where that post description looks like, which is what Michelle has built in your template job. So this will be inherited again when you create a job off of a template and then sent over to the career page. This is also where like the application form lives. And Michelle has spent a ton of time building this out for your organization with all the basic info you need to collect and then all of the supplemental questions. I don't have them in this example, but you all will see like a bunch of supplemental questions that have been added as just that formal application that you have candidates fill out when they apply. All of that lives in the job post section and will be pulled over when you create off of a template job. Um, and then there are some additional settings you can customize like the confirmation email that should go out to candidates, the application refresh on the career page that they should see, and, you know, enabling EEOC questionnaire. And this is also where you can send this out to free job boards like Glassdoor and Indeed, in addition to your career page. What I wanna do is just preview this though. So 
this is again what I mean when I say like the candidate facing job post. This is the unstylized version um, that I just see because my demo account isn't integrated with um, a built out career page like yours will be. Um, I know Michelle has worked with like a team that's built a really great career page for you all. So it'll look a little bit different, um, but the, the takeaway is the same. It's like the job description and the application that equates to job post in greenhouse terms. And that's what you'll wanna make sure you toggle live after the job has been approved and opened to send it to the career page. Questions on the job post or anything to add, Michelle or Lois? So I'll mention that um, just because we're still building this out, I don't have I don't have approvals set up for job openings, so that's not a feature I don't believe I've configured right now. So just to mm -hmm. mention that. Right. Yeah. Good. Good call. Great, okay. Um, so that is kind of all, of, those are rather all the steps that go into creating an open job. So at this point, we have an open STNA position that's ready to kick off recruiting. Well, this is not a real account, so I won't, but like in theory, in real life, you all would start to see candidates then flow in to this job, to that application review bucket. If you're the recruiter on this job, you're gonna see them on your dashboard to start reviewing, advancing, and kind of moving through the process there. Great, so next thing we're gonna talk about is how to actually conduct an interview via Greenhouse. We've talked about the job dashboard, sorry, the dashboard, we talked about creating a job, two really core features and functionality. Another really important thing for y'all to know is like what it looks like to actually conduct an interview using this. Um, so as you can see, I have an upcoming interview today for that behavioral phone interview that we took a look at. Um, I had already created like another STNA position separate from the one we just built together. Um, so this candidate has been scheduled for an upcoming interview on that job. And we can see their name, basic info, and the interview kit. So basically when you have an upcoming interview in Greenhouse, you're gonna see it on your dashboard. You're gonna get an email notification reminding you of that interview day of. You're also gonna get an invite. So this is my demo inbox. So please excuse like the millions of emails here, but you'll get an email basically saying that you have um, this interview or, or an interview invite rather. Um, but I think where it's probably easier to show this is it's gonna be an invite that's gonna surface on your calendar. So someone schedules you for this interview, it hits your calendar, you'll see some version of what we see here. Um, and what's the most important takeaway for you all is that in this interview invite that you get to your Outlook calendar, um, this URL, I have some other URLs that you wouldn't necessarily see, um, but you'll have, or sorry, this URL rather, is going to be a URL to the interview kit. So most folks using Greenhouse either access their interview kit via the URL on their calendar invite that they received from Greenhouse, or they access their interview kit via their Greenhouse dashboard. I'm so in the practice of logging into Greenhouse all the time that I just access it from my dashboard. But a lot of folks like you who might not be living and breathing in the system every single day um, will just access it, that interview kit, directly from your calendar. One way or another, however you get there, you'll click see interview kit and you'll be landed on a page that looks like this. So this is our interview kit. I'm gonna walk through just kind of some of the core modules here, but basically the intent of the interview kit is to serve surface as, sorry, serve rather as our interview guide. Um, so again, as we talked about, this is like a larger initiative at the organization to continue building and standardizing these. Uh, high level, the idea is to conduct kind of like a focused purposeful interview kit for this candidate. So it's a better interview experience for the candidate and also just for you as an interviewer kind of having what you need for that conversation. Um, so there are a couple of different things you'll see, just the name of the interview, the job, and then we have it divided into a couple of different tabs on the interview kit itself. Interview prep is going to pull in whatever we set as that prep section when we were looking at filling out, the, or sorry, creating the behavioral phone interview on our interview plan. All of that customization we did pulls in here. Um, so this is gonna look pretty standard for y'all just inheriting some of our default fields. Ultimately, ultimately it'll look a little bit different, but just kind of gives you some idea, ideas on the purpose um, and some sample questions that you might ask with a link to fill out your scorecard. 
from there, you'll see a resume. So I just have like a basic PDF uploaded here. You would see an actual candidate resume to access in real time with your conversation with them. And then the final tab that you will see here is that scorecard. So we're going to walk through this together right now. Basically, the idea with the scorecard is this is where you're submitting your feedback for this conversation with the candidate and assessing them against those core competencies for the job. Um, again, this will look a little bit lighter weight for y'all right now as these are still in progress, um, kind of separate initiative here. But what's always important is just to add in your key takeaways. So like you've conducted your conversation, your interview with this candidate. What are some key takeaways, pros, cons, just capturing that all in the system so you have it in one place. Really your spot to just take some notes. Um, within the key takeaways field, you can like tag others. So if there's a specific member of the team, you can tag them here with an at mention. Not sure why it's not showing up right now. There we go. Um, so I could tag this user, you know, FYI, here's something that, that came up during this interview. So that can just be a helpful feature to leverage if you want to basically tag someone and trigger a real-time email notification to them about this candidate. Other items you can do, you can fill in some private notes. If you have private permissions in Greenhouse, you can add a note for other interviewers. So if you add a note for other interviewers, this will essentially then surface in their interview prep section. So maybe there's like a question that I didn't get to that I want the next interviewer to ask. Maybe um, there's something that came up that I want them to follow up on. I can kind of alert them as needed to something they should focus on in their interview or something they should know via this public notes feature right here. So those are the core like three fields that you'll see up top when you're filling out your scorecard. And then beneath that is like the scorecard itself. So this is where you're actually like going through and rating attributes. Um, what's probably most important for y'all is to rate like their qualifications. So you'll see, we'll just use this as an example. Um, we have everything from definitely not to no to mixed yes and strong yes. Um, I typically recommend like choosing one side or the other and like minimizing the number of times you're putting mixed just so it's like a clear data point for the team as to like whether or not you think the candidate performed well in this attribute. Let's just say for this candidate, you know, they had really good qualifications. They have their state tested nursing assistant certification. I can even add a note to like just compliment, like add a little bit of additional context for the team. Um, but this is essentially where I'm logging some of that feedback. Ultimately, once your interview kits, y'all have kind of collaborated on this internally and built more robust questions and like focus areas. Um, the idea is that like each interviewer would have like a dedicated set of attributes that they're assessing and those would be highlighted on the scorecard for them to focus on and ask specific targeted questions to like glean. But current state, this is, is what y'all would see. Um, so you'd want to kind of assess any of the items that you picked up on, specifically those qualifications. You can add in any additional context for the team and fill these out as you work through the list. And then the most important thing to do is always to make sure you're submitting an overall recommendation as to whether or not the candidate passed this interview. Because this is essentially data, right? Like feedback data that we can take a look at as a team. And then we'll take a look at where that actually surfaces on the candidate profile, but it's important to make sure you're filling out the attributes that you can, as well as the overall recommendation and leaving any notes from your conversation in the takeaways field. Um, so that's high level kind of what it would look like to actually, you know, we've had this conversation, this interview with our candidate Ben here. We do our key takeaways, we rate the attributes that we feel we touched on, and we submit an overall recommendation. Long term, this will be a little bit more structured, but this is kind of what it will look current state. Any questions on this or Michelle Lois, anything that y'all want to add around like expectations for the team here? Yeah, I did want to add, um, thanks Henry for explaining this. And again, another reason we chose Greenhouse was this ability to standardize and start back and see what we can learn. So for now on the things like the personality traits, et cetera, just fill in what you choose to fill in. Ultimately, as we develop these into true Otterbein eyes things, um, they'll be standard. Uh, we'll provide some uh, information on what it, you know, what each rating means. And then you will be expected to complete this. And then we'll be using this information uh, both to try to track and see, um, gee, what are most people rating candidates on this particular thing? Um, or if we see, you know, one interviewer is, is really always low, one's really always high, 
and we can follow up to make sure everyone understands the rating categories. Um, and then, of course, very importantly, the um, that you'll be doing on the recommendation, because that starts to help us see, well, do we've you know, gotten 50 candidates, we hope, one day, <laughs> and only two pass. So that means we need something different on the advertising end to try to get down to what we really need, you know, better qualified candidates, so you're not wasting your time on losers. Um, so again, right now, use your own judgment and, and scoring, um, make sure you do the um, recommendation part and more to come. Awesome. Great, yeah, thanks for that. Um, just in all context, Lois. Um, and I wanna show you all kind of where this feedback surfaces, because I think that'll be helpful to see. So we'll take a look at that together in one sec. But um, before we submit the scorecard, I just wanted to show you a few other almost just like operational items, just so you kind of have your bearings when you're in the interview kit. That's like the nitty gritty of it. And like mostly what you'll be working through is submitting the scorecard. There are a couple helpful things on the right hand rail here. So the first is if you click here, you'll be taken to the candidate's profile. You'll see their email address. We're gonna take a look at their profile in a sec. You can open their resume in a new tab. If you click this, I just like to usually like click right here, but if for whatever reason you want it in a separate tab, that can be accommodated. Um, what I think is also really helpful is, and this might be more relevant for kind of like a back-to-back, -back, like face-to-face -face stage. So we're still just at the behavioral phone interview, but you can see like a record of like who was before you and who's up next. You can see basically like your interview and any like adjacently scheduled interviews here. So you'll, you'll know who's kind of up next. You can also download the kit as a PDF if you want it for offline record. And lastly, we do have apps for iOS and um, Google Play. So you can download those and it's basically like a mobile version of this interview kit where you can kind of do and see all the same things, but kind of manage it on the go as well. Questions on any of this before we submit our scorecard and take a look at where the feedback surface is? Okay, so let's submit our scorecard. Okay, so now that we've submitted it, we can view Ben, or if we notice we did something wrong, we can quickly go in and edit it. I'm feeling good about the scorecard though, so I'm just gonna click into Ben's profile. And so this is Ben's, like Ben's specific candidate profile. Um, so I'm not gonna go like too, too into the weeds of the candidate profile. I think like the most important pieces, the most important takeaways for you all on the candidate profile is like, each candidate is going to have their own profile where you can see a record of all of the jobs that they've applied to at your organization. And this example then has only applied to this one SCNA position. And so what we're seeing right here in this tab is essentially like his status on this job. So we can see that he is in the phone interview stage, that I've submitted my feedback, and that if he advances, he'll move into face-to-face -face reference check, verbal offer. It's that interview plan that we took a look at earlier, kind of on the back end. This is how it actually appears. So we can see like where this candidate sits in that larger process. We can advance them, we can reject them from this window. Um, and then there are a couple other details we can take a look at. Like there's an activity feed that's just gonna track all of the communication and actions that have been taken on Ben's profile, additional details. And then there's a private tab that you'll have access to if you have private permissions where you can see whatever private info. Um, Additionally, if they're a candidate, like you need to follow up with them or whatever the case may be, you can add a follow up reminder. You can make a larger note, like if it doesn't make sense, if it's not a note that's like specific to the interview that you conducted and maybe just something that's just related to the candidate more high level, you can make that note on the profile itself and you can still tag another user um, if it's just like something that doesn't make sense to leave on the scorecard. Um, and then take some additional actions like emailing, then emailing other team members on the job making his profile private or kind of like blocking him from emails. Um, all of that can be managed on the right hand rail here. Um, but what I wanna show y'all, we talked about kind of like high level, how you can use this to just see where Ben sits in the process. Um, I wanna show y'all the scorecards tab because this is where like all of that feedback is going to flow um, is into the scorecards tab so we can see basically ultimately what this will look like. Let's say Ben has made it to the end of the process and I had submitted another scorecard on him before our call, but let's just imagine he's made it all the way to the end of the process um, on this SCNA position. 
we're going to see every single interviewer's overall recommendation here, which is really advantageous because it's essentially data, right? We can see like, okay, what was everyone's like high level takeaway? Like, is there pretty like overwhelming consensus here? Or are we like kind of mixed in our overall recommendations? Where do we need to kind of like unpack some of that nuance where there might be some disagreement? Um, and then you can expand to see like more details about their scorecards that they've submitted, um, like their individual attribute ratings and any comments that they left. What I think super helpful is like the scorecard summary that we see right here pulls like every interviewer's ratings in aggregate into this chart view essentially. So again, like more data points that we can use to make kind of an informed data-driven decision on whether or not we want to like offer than a job with Otterbine. Um, so similar to what I said above, like we can see, okay, like which attributes is there clear consensus on, like probably with a lens mostly on qualifications. Um, does he meet the mark? Like, are we in alignment here? Or are we seeing kind of like ratings all over the board? Maybe we need to like call him in for one more interview to like unpack some of that. Um, that's really where current state, but also long-term, you're gonna see a lot of value in the scorecards tab because it just gives you a really good structure for potentially even that like debrief meeting if you have one to see where there's alignment on feedback for this candidate. That can also be exported as a PDF if you want to review it offline together. Um, but that's kind of where this surfaces and why it's so important to put your overall recommendation at the very least. Questions on the scorecards section right here? Okay, so one other thing that we wanted to walk through was just kind of, this is more basic like job agnostic, but that's your account settings. So basically if you go into, it'll say hi, you know, your name, and then you can click on account settings from that dropdown. And this is where you can just customize some additional preferences. So um, you can edit your personal email, like name, email, time zone, um, you can generate that referrer link that we took to look took a look at where I like generate a URL to the entire job board to share with my network. You can generate that right here as well. You can also connect to your social networks here. Um, this is not really relevant, more so if you're communicating with our support team. Um, and then you can also edit some notification preferences. So if you want daily interview reminders, if you want to receive a daily recruiting email from just like high level of the days of scheduled interviews, um, you can configure these like high level notification preferences here. Um, and then we have a Slack integration if you all are using Slack, which I don't believe you are, but you can enable that if, if that is the case and get some of those email notifications via direct message. Um, and then yeah, that you actually you actually won't see. So you'll just see the personal settings in your account settings. Uh, pretty straightforward. We just wanted to call this out so you know where to make some of these edits on an as needed basis. Any questions on that? Great. Well, that's the the main items that we all wanted to cover with with you all today. Um, are there any like high level questions based on what we've discussed today that the team has, or again, like Lois and Michelle, anything that we've covered that y'all wanna just clarify or had a little context to? Hi, Henry, this is Holly Rainey. I, I work at our Spring Girl location. Um, the get help that's down in the corner, and please forgive me if you already covered this, does that appear on all screens so that if somebody gets hung up on yeah, something, sure. they can they can get there and figure it out? Yeah, great question. I actually didn't cover that. Um, so thanks for asking. Um, yeah, so there's the help center, which is like FAQs. Um, but to your point, like, yeah, if you can't find what you're looking for in the FAQ and you just want to connect with like a, a real human, um, you can click get help right here. Um, you'll all see this in your greenhouse accounts on the bottom left hand side. And you'll basically start by typing in a question. I'm not going to do this because I don't want to be connected with our support team in real time. Um, but you can type a question. It's going to like surface an FAQ to see if that answers your question. If it doesn't, you'll basically just click, I still need help. And this will connect you to one of our support specialists and they'll 
able to just go back and forth with you live to answer a question that's coming up. So this is really good for like, like product usability questions, like why is this button appearing here, expecting it to appear here. If you feel like you're encountering like an error of any kind or just have basic product questions, that's a really great way for you and others to get real-time assistance via Greenhouse. So if people use GitHub, is there an extra charge for that or is that built in? No. This is very happy. Built in, yep. Okay. And then- And that's gonna where, be, oh, go ahead. Where are the FAQs? Yeah, and one thing I just wanna say is uh, get help is gonna be, like the live chat's gonna be available from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern. Okay, okay. Um, and then, yeah, the FAQs, if you click visit our help center, um, it just takes you to the Greenhouse Support Center and, Typically, I recommend just like searching the feature that you're having trouble with, um, but then there's some like structured guidance, like with more higher level topics here as well. But I typically say just like if you start searching, it's going to start to surface like relevant support articles. For some reason, it's not responding right now, but um, that's a way to kind of just like get some of that initial help. I, I like I've worked at Greenhouse for two years and I reference that support center all the time. Um, so I like to call it customers as well just for that like first troubleshooting step if you encounter a question thank you could, yeah could you clarify for me so we if we have a director of nursing or a programming director and they log they log into greenhouse they can see their dashboard they can see their current applicants and where they fall in the status where do you mm -hmm. go to actually schedule the interview to have it placed on their calendar? Yeah, um, so yeah, that we didn't discuss today, but what I'm happy to do is share with Michelle and Lois, like we have a webinar that just walks through that. Um, in terms of where they would go to schedule their interviews, typically I would go to candidates to schedule. Um, and then it's really something that would be managed. Either you can do it from right here, where you can kind of like do multiple, kind of like work through multiple candidates at once, or if you just want to schedule one candidate, you would do that from the candidate profile. Um, excuse me, but that's a separate workflow that I can share a webinar on how to do that I recommend like anyone scheduling should, should watch just to walk through that process. So we'll get that from Henry and get out to everyone. Mm -hmm. But I believe, and I could be wrong because so many different components, um, but we still don't have the ability to place that on your calendar, I think. Henry, I love so you should be able to. So you should be able to like via our scheduling workflow. Y'all are using on-premise Outlook, right? Correct. Yeah, so there is a way still to schedule it so that it'll surface on the calendar. This is like the end result where I have this interview on my test calendar here to interview that candidate that we just took a look at. Um, and so y'all will be able to leverage that same functionality. Um, so what I'll do is send the webinar that walks through it and then a compliment, like a, a kind of additional FAQ that just has additional kind of detail for how to do it with on-premise Outlook specifically. Perfect, thanks Henry. Yeah, for sure. Okay, we're nearing our time. Cool. Henry, is there any other questions? No. Yeah. We have the next half hour to also ask other questions. I'd say Michelle and me, but primarily Michelle with me listening. Okay. Well, okay. We're good. Well, what I can, awesome. Um, well, thanks so much everyone for the time. Um, it was great connecting with you all. And again, I'll hop off, but I'm going to, um, I have a rec obviously recorded the call so I can share that with Michelle and Lois along with some of those resources that we talked through. Um, and I think, let me just triple check. I wanna make sure that I'm transferring ownership to Michelle. Um, so let me just try, okay, perfect. So I'm leaving the meeting, but Michelle, I'm going to make you the host if that works. Um, you can kind of drive from here. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you. Okay.
Perfect. So I'm going to hop off. Um, I'll follow up with you, Michelle and Lois, via email. And obviously we have our normal check-in later today. So I'll talk to you all soon. Nice to meet everyone else. Um, and I'm going to hop off and 